Welcome to the Autism and Communication Strategies for Facilitating Social Interactions Training provided by the Kentucky Autism Training Center. I'm Heather Page Alger, a speech language pathologist, and I'm certified by the American Speech Language Hearing Association, known as ASHA. I serve as a field training coordinator for the Kentucky Autism Training Center and will be hosting today's training. The title of this training presentation, Autism and Communication, Strategies for Facilitating Social Interactions, will target these areas. Understanding communication and social communication challenges for children and adults with autism and identifying strategies to support and facilitate communication and social communication with siblings, family members, peers, teachers, therapy providers, and or community members. The overall goal of this presentation is to provide intervention strategies for families and individuals working with persons with autism. The Kentucky Autism Training Center serves all of Kentucky with the mission to strengthen our state's systems of support for persons affected by autism. We bridge the gap between research and practice by providing training and resources to families and professionals. We partner with other agencies and groups, including the regional educational cooperatives, to provide training and professional learning for educators and other service providers to provide high quality services for autistic people. We promote the use of research-based practices by training practitioners of various disciplines in building the statewide capacity for high quality services across the lifespan for autistic people. These are the staff members for the Kentucky Autism Training Center. The participants for today's training may access additional information which is located under the bit.ly or within the QR code. There are additional resources made available. Just a note before we proceed further with the presentation. Persons with autism may be referred to in this presentation using person first language such as a child with autism, or identity-first language, such as autistic child, to accommodate differences in individual preferences. Let's begin. Consider this quote by Temple Grandin. She is a person with autism who is well known throughout the world for her insight into the life of an autistic person. Please note that within the quote, when she refers to an Aspie, she is referring to a person who has been diagnosed with Asperger's. Temple Grandin states, in an ideal world, the scientists should find a method to prevent the most severe forms of autism, but allow the milder forms to survive. After all, the really social people did not invent the first stone spear. It was probably invented by an Aspie who chipped away at rocks while the other people socialized around the campfire. Without autism traits, we might still be living in caves. This was Temple Grandin, Thinking in Pictures, Expanded Edition, My Life with Autism, 2006. How do you interpret her message? One may interpret this message to mean that she believes that persons with autism may not socialize in the same manner as others without autism, and that that lack of socialization allows for the autistic person to create an accomplished task. She shines the light on the socialization differences exhibited by autistic people. Now let's continue with the presentation Communication and social interactions. Social interactions include communicating a message to one or more persons by way of speaking and or nonverbal communication, 
such as exhibiting facial expressions, gesturing, using body language or hand signals. We can be the sender of the communication within a social interaction or the recipient within a social interaction. We read or interpret the message from the communication partner and the communication partner is doing the same with our message. Now think about how our lives would be different if social interactions rarely occurred within our lives. Consider how social interaction could cause anxiety and avoidance of social interactions if we did not understand how to approach a social interaction, engage in a social interaction, join in an existing social interaction, etc. Consider if we lacked the necessary language skills to participate in the social interactions. These are the social interaction challenges faced by autistic people daily. Let's take a close look at the diagnostic criteria for autism so that we can better understand the criteria specifically that might impact communication and social interactions. What criteria are considered for a person to receive the diagnosis of autism? According to the American Psychiatric Association Desk Reference Manual, known as the DSM-5, what characteristics of autism impact communication and specifically social interactions? Keep in mind these criteria as we make our way through the presentation since this information will help to guide you as you think about the challenges for autistic persons and ways to facilitate interactions specific to social communication. Let's think about social communication and communicative interactions that can be and should be strategically targeted when helping the autistic person to interact in social engagement situations and settings. As defined by the DSM-5, there are three deficit social communication and social interaction characteristics associated with autism. Autism is a disorder that affects the brain. And first we notice that social interactions with others are deficient. We may notice that the conversational turn taking or the natural back and forth flow that keeps a conversation moving is affected. Second, nonverbal communication is impacted. Lack of eye contact and deficits in understanding and deficits with the use of gestures along with the lack of facial expressions and or nonverbal communication is also observed. The DSM-5 also points out deficits in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationships are difficulties and play behaviors including imaginative play and making friends for instance with the absence of an interest in peers is another characteristic that may be observed. Other parts of the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria include restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior. And these are manifested by at least two of the following. So these may impact daily routines and especially social language. So you may observe stereotyped or repetitive motor movements and those can be seen with the lining up of objects. This is especially seen in speech with echolalia being observed. Now, what is echolalia, one may ask? Echolalia is when uh, the autistic person repeats the same word, phrase, or sentence that has just been spoken to them by a conversational partner. They may also use idiosyncratic phrases, which are those same phrases uh, to greet people or to start a conversation, regardless of who the conversational partner might be. You also will notice insistence on sameness, and this is huge with the inability to adapt to a change in routine. Uh, the person with autism may show extreme distress at small changes. There's huge difficulties with transitions, uh, greeting those conversational partners. They tend to want to speak to the same conversational partners, the same people every day. 
about the same topics every day, regardless of whether or not the conversational partner wants to talk about that topic for that day. So we're going to talk about that some uh, within this presentation. So within the areas of social interaction deficits, we need to think about the restricted repetitive patterns, the insisted upon sameness when we're thinking about intervening, modeling, and facilitating social communication interactions for persons with autism. Parts three and four of the DSM-5 criteria for autism include highly restricted, fixated interests that are abnormal intensity or focus. So there's perceptive interest and narrow topic focus, which would obviously impact social uh, language interactions. You might notice a focus, intense focus, on interests such as trains, planets, or race cars, for example. Individuals with autism may have a vast knowledge of these topics, but misunderstand other topics that may arise in social conversations, such as simply chatting with another person about their day, asking questions to get to know an individual, introducing themselves, asking a friend to visit or play a game with them. Autistic children have difficulty with ending a conversation in an expected manner too they may just walk away from the conversation to end it. The person with autism may have difficulty in the manner that a conversation evolves to include the communication partner's interest. And that goes back to number three there with the abnormal intensity or focus on certain subjects. So the subjects, the autistic person's ability uh, to make those comments about the conversational partner's interest and contribute to the conversation is affected. The autistic individual may not understand that the peer or the family member may be leading the conversation to include other areas of interest. They may miss the cues that the conversation is evolving or changing. Sometimes the autistic person will abruptly change the previous topic back to the autistic individual's focus or high interest area. Still other parts of the DSM-5 criteria include the hyper or hypo reactivity to sensory input or unusual interest in sensory aspects of the environment, which may include that the child with autism enjoys just turning on the faucet just to feel the water rush over their hands because they're, they're seeking that sensory experience other times there's overreaction to auditory stimuli, such as loud noises in the environment. Uh, the person with autism may be very hypersensitive to smells, um, engage in excessive touching of objects. So these things may distract from social interactions. Other characteristics for the diagnosis of autism include symptoms must be present in the early developmental period. Those may not be observed until the social demands exceed the capacities for the autistic person's social language interactions. Also, we see in part D, symptoms cause clinically significant impairment in social, occupational, and other areas of current functioning. Again, we see the word social, so again, we're looking at the diagnostic criteria mentions social functioning several times within the diagnostic criteria. Overall, autism can impact many areas of a person's life. We've touched upon the diagnosis of autism and some examples of autism, and we've noted the possible impact to communication and especially socialization. Let's look at the part of social communication and interactions specifically known as pragmatics. Pragmatics are described by speechandhealth.com as the social language use part of our language. Pragmatics involves using language for different reasons like greetings and how that's a very different type of communication function as compared to asking for something. 
a part of pragmatics that can be very impacted and observed in persons with autism is the person's ability to adjust the kind of language used based upon who is listening, such as how a person engages in conversation with one's teacher, which is different as compared to one's conversation with a friend or a family member, and how to adjust the vocabulary, the facial expressions, the body language. We see that with such as how close to stand to a listener. All of that is part of the pragmatics portion of social language. The ability to adjust the communication content, such as the telling of jokes, or calling the speaker by a nickname, for example. The person with autism may have difficulty knowing when a joke is appropriate and when the joke can be said. Pragmatics also includes the conversational rules, such as taking turns within a conversation or staying on topic. These are big challenges for autistic persons. These are characteristics of social communication exhibited by autistic persons that can limit the autistic person's ability to engage and sustain conversations. The person with autism may lack the ability to start a conversation or respond to a question or comment from the communication partner. The autistic person may provide too little or too much information that is appropriate for the situation. For example, when the person with autism is asked by a new acquaintance or a peer, what's your name? The person with autism may vocalize a mini speech about one's birth, the origin of the name, preferences for use of a nickname and why that nickname is chosen, etc. Instead of simply stating the name or preferred nickname. The person with autism may seem to focus upon interacting with objects, a preoccupation with objects per se instead of people. The autistic person may focus on a particular feature of a communication partner's face, such as the communication partner's wearing of glasses or the hairstyle, rather than making eye contact. The person with autism may say something shockingly frank to a peer, such as, your haircut is ugly, instead of using a socially pragmatic type of con comment, such as, you have a new haircut, without embedding the honest opinion. It's knowing and judging when and how to make comments to others that is deficient which can cause barriers in home conversations, in school settings, or peer settings. Pragmatic difficulties may be observed and noted by therapists during office visits or within clinical settings too. Persons with autism may be observed to prefer to be alone or play alone. Certainly making new friends is a challenge and following the pace of others is also a challenge. These are barriers to social interactions and the social language pragmatics that can be observed. The restricted range of interest, the unusual attachment to the objects, and the difficulty with the changing of a routine or a ritual, that need for sameness, the trouble letting go of ideas, this can appear and certainly impact the autistic person's social language interactions and the focusing on one idea. We talked about some information previously about that. Uh, stereotypic behaviors, sometimes you see the hand flapping or the lining up of items and specifically the limited range of interest or insisting on interacting around their preferred topic. When caregivers or professionals have concerns about a child's language development, such as social language pragmatics, then a speech language pathologist should be consulted. 
Speech language pathologists have extensive knowledge about communication skills. The child's doctor or medical professional may suggest or provide a referral to a speech language pathologist. The American Speech Language Hearing Association, known as ASHA, houses an online searchable database that includes the names of certified speech language pathologists. A speech language pathologist may recommend a communication evaluation, for instance, if there's concerns about a child's language development. So how do family members, teachers, peers, or therapists assist in the autistic person's social communication development? What strategies can be utilized? What strategies would be appropriate to include in intervention practices at home or within a therapy setting that may improve carryover of skills to other settings? Using interventions incorporating evidence-based practices. Why are evidence-based practices important when working on communication skills, specifically social interactions? The National Clearinghouse on Autism Evidence and Practice has identified 28 research-based practices that have demonstrated the best current methods for assessment and intervention for autism. The strategies have been researched with reported gains for autistic persons. Some specific strategies will be reviewed and explained in a condensed manner to spark intervention ideas for families and professionals. The participants may want to review the references at the end of this presentation for more in-depth information about evidence-based practices. Remember that the entire presentation will be made available in the Resources folder. Let's take a look at the basic definitions for these strategies. The highlighted practices will be explained and some videos viewed so that families and professionals can better understand four practices that would build social interaction skills for persons with autism. First, modeling is included. This is a practice that helps the person with autism to learn from watching another person perform an activity or skill correctly, such as conversational turn taking. Prompting and reinforcement are also accented on this list since these practices are needed to learn a new skill practice the skill, and then carry over that skill. Prompting is assisting the learner in some way to demonstrate the skill, such as providing a verbal reminder to perform the skill. Reinforcement is emphasized. This occurs when we reward the behavior that we were hoping to observe. Reinforcement is different than punishment when the behavior that we hope to change is occurring or observed. We know that persons with autism are motivated by reinforcement. Also note the highlighted visual supports evidence-based practice within the list, which is an important component or piece of any intervention strategy. Autistic persons are highly visually responsive learners to information that is represented by objects, photos, pictures, written words, or sentences. Autistic children and adults respond very well to visual input. Visual supports as part of any intervention support cannot be overlooked or neglected. Let's examine these practices and look closer at how these practices should be part of a social skills interaction and intervention program. When learning new information or building upon previously learned information, it is important to understand the evidence-based practices are connected and several practices may be needed to encourage the development of new skills. 
let's examine the evidence-based practice of modeling. What is modeling? Sam and the Affirm team tell us that modeling occurs when someone correctly performs the target behavior for the learner. The learner observes the modeling of the target skills before being asked to demonstrate the skill. Therefore, this presentation's focus upon social communication and interactions would involve that a parent or professional, for example, would correctly demonstrate a social communication learner target, exactly what the name modeling indicates. We will view a video next that will show the child exhibiting the prerequisites of modeling, imitating the actions of the modeler, performing some of the skill being targeted, and sustaining attention long enough to watch the skill that is being modeled. Marcus is very loving and very affectionate. We were blessed with him and he is on the autism spectrum. I'm Renee Dunn. Marcus, look. Hi, Marcus is oh. grandmother. Look. Car? You have a car? He likes playing by himself. And whenever you would sit down with him, he would kind of move away. Stop the game. And he is getting very, very frustrated not being able to communicate. His grandmother watches him while his parents work. When I first started working with Marcus, he was not talking, not saying any words. He had lots of babbling. He wasn't very interested in playing with others. I'm Jenny Sharpless. I'm a speech-language pathologist here at the Kennedy Krieger Center for Autism and Related Disorders. The number one strategy we're going to work on today is just tuning in to what he's interested in and imitating him. So show me how you normally play at home. Okay, well, the first thing we would do is we would take them out. Now, if he didn't immediately take something, then I'd give him something. There you go. Very good, Marcus. Very good. Great, so he was really good at that puzzle. Yes. But the one thing that I noticed is mm -hmm. that he's playing and you're watching. Yes. I want you to be able to be his play partner. So what was he doing with this puzzle? He was picking up each piece and putting it in. Yeah. So, so then you will take your turn. So you I can do one and then I'll do one. Yes. Which we do. Already, the look of your play has changed. You were playing together. It looked like you were taking turns. It already looked more fun. One thing is we talked about not asking a lot of questions, not using a lot of um, generic type language, but looking at a toy and thinking about what's the most important vocabulary we can pick out from this toy. It's just looking at this simple puzzle, what are some vocabulary words that come to mind? Colors, as opposed to shapes. Or if colors were too difficult, I would count, because he loves numbers. Also, we can think of the action words. We put in and we take out. We'll put it in. Which one? As soon as we simplified her language, she joined him in play, he stuck with her longer, and he started saying words, which was amazing. Has he ever seen this toy before? So he's figuring out that the balls can go in the holes. So thinking about the imitate strategy we do in the puzzle, what would you do to join in with his play? Now let me offer one suggestion. Come around and be face, more face to face with him. Already it changes the look of your play. It looks like you're playing with him rather than just watching him. True. So now I can take this toy. So we think it has to be something so difficult. And we have to have all this education about autism to work with them. Ready, set, go! Actually, I've learned here with Jenny that it's 
just the little simple things that you do and simplify the way you think about playing with them that really helps them the most. So make sure you have your own. Because when you imitate him, you don't want to have to take his toy. Because it's not about turn taking, it's about really imitating him. What are you going to do now that you have your own car? I'm going to try to play along with you. Ready, set, go! And look, he is enjoying this so much. You're getting such nice eye contact. Mm -hmm. He's smiling at you. The next thing I want you to think about is your language. So we already know go is a word because he's saying it. Go! But what, what other what other words do you think can you think about with this toy? Um, Good. Renee, like lots of parents want to teach their child something new, that's where we get the next part of the strategy, the expand part. So we can think about expanding on our language a little bit and saying uh, cargo or go car. So to hear him say we because he was excited or go because he knew it was time for the car to go down the ramp. It's, it's, it's wonderful. This bus does exactly what he likes to do. He likes to put things in or on. So we can show him this toy. So make sure your positioning is also on your mind. When you're in this type of position, he can make eye contact with you easier. He can share smiles with you easier. Especially in this era of technology, there's less emphasis on toys and just good old fashioned play. Being in there and, 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 and taking my turn and it lets him have fun with it. Thank you. <laughs> Join in, do what they're doing, see what they're doing. And it, it, it definitely works. So now I can just play with them and he'll enjoy it and we'll still be learning. As we viewed within the modeling video example, the caregiver was coached regarding her modeling of the skills. The focus of the video was imitating. We observed the modeling prerequisites of imitating the action, performing some of the action, and showing the attention needed to watch the skill being modeled. We observed turn taking, eye contact, imitation, and lots of spoken language being modeled. We also observed how the caregiver expanded the child's language, which means to add to the child's spoken language attempts. The video also showed how valuable play activities are in building social language skills, and both the caregiver and the child appeared to enjoy the activity. Targeting social communication involves patience and wait time. Always provide a short pause for the child to demonstrate the social communication skill following your model. Praise the child when the skill is demonstrated correctly. Keep in mind that this is dependent upon the child's level of language understanding and usage. Expand upon the child's vocalization attempts, such as when the child says, car, expand that utterance by saying, I see a car. What is the evidence-based practice of prompting? Let's learn about prompting. Sam and the Affirm team indicate that Prompting means providing some assistance, that's help, to the learner in using a specific skill or behavior. Types of prompting include a gestural prompt, a verbal prompt, visual prompt, and model prompt. Let's say, for instance, that the social language target is for the autistic child to respond when asked the first name 
the verbal prompt may include saying to the child, say, and then wait to observe whether or not the child says the name, or the caregiver may even whisper the child's name as a verbal prompt, or say the first part of the name as a verbal prompt. This could be followed by a subtle gesture, signaling that the child should respond. Then an additional prompt, such as the model prompt, could occur. The caregiver or pr practitioner actually models saying the name after saying the question. A visual prompt may be a card with the child's printed name on it that the caregiver or practitioner would show to provide the visual cue. When practicing a skill, it's important to allow wait time for the child to respond. Allow the learner to perform the social interaction target independently, without assistance first, and provide the guidance or model that target if the target is not performed correctly, using the types of prompts that we previously outlined. Another type of evidence-based practice is reinforcement. What is reinforcement? A response to someone's behavior that is intended to make that person more likely to behave that way again. Positive reinforcement is a process which strengthens the type of behavior that is applied to. It is a consequence which follows the occurrence of behavior. For example, you may say something or display an action with a conversational partner and your conversational partner may smile. That's an example. This consequence can increase the likelihood of you eliciting a similar response in the future under the same circumstances. Explain more simply, positive reinforcement means you do something, then you immediately get something you like, and you will be more likely to engage in similar behavior again in the future under a similar context. The desired behavior is reinforced. The mother selected modeling as the evidence-based practice to use to address her child cleaning up toys. Watch as the practitioner demonstrates how she would model cleaning up to the child. Okay, so as far as modeling, it's too complicated. It's actually just doing what you want Xavier to do. So it involves while he's watching and putting it in the bucket. Um, and then when he does successfully put it in the bucket, that's when we want to go to our reinforcement. So clap, cheer, and high five, or whatever you think is, is the right fit for whatever he's doing, okay. um, or whatever he's preferring. But any given day, I guess you can do ice cream too, right? That's true. Okay, well cool, do you want to try it? Yeah. So I'm just going to model it for him. Here you go, you got it. Perfect. <laughs> a little animation. Yeah. Did you notice that the practitioner had the parent practice modeling and reinforcement following her demonstration? The practitioner provided feedback that the practices were being used correctly. One of the keys to using reinforcement is that the reinforcer must be an activity or item that the child really enjoys. For younger children, activities with music, Puzzles and art activities are examples. For older children, interactions with peers, music, drawing, and playing card board type games with family or friends are all age appropriate types of reinforcers to consider. According to Sam and the Affirm team, reinforcement should be available accessible and ready to use before implementing. Have the reinforcer nearby so that when the child performs the new skill, the reinforcement can be delivered immediately. Here's some tips on using reinforcement to increase social communication skills. Autistic persons will likely perform the activity if they know that a reinforcer will follow just like our preferences for desired objects or activities change over time, this happens as well with reinforcers. Re the reinforcer may need to be changed as the child's 
preferences change. Reinforcement each time the skill is performed is needed. Make sure the reinforcer is not available for the person with autism until the skill is used. And then fade reinforcers as a child demonstrates social interaction skills independently. So where do we start with building social interactions and using the evidence-based practices to make progress in social language? Here's some ideas. The communication social language skills targeted for social interaction intervention could include greetings, responding to one's own name. This may be an earlier observed deficit. The person with autism may need to be directly taught to respond to the name. Also, the autistic child may need instruction in calling a person or friend by their given name. The initial interactions and the responses are important to opening the door to further communication interactions with siblings, peers, and community members. In the following clip, the mom is working with her son to clean up balls. Notice how the practitioner provides support and feedback to the mom when the practice does not initially work. You ready to clean? You ready to clean? Yeah. Uh, ball, ball. Yeah, put the balls in. Put them in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, put them in. I'm going to try opening them. I'll successful the first time. The practitioner continued to provide support and suggestions on using the practice until the child successfully cleaned up the balls. Maintaining conversations is an area of social language that may need specific teaching as well. Making appropriate comments within the communication exchange taking turns during conversation, and the ability to recognize when the communication partner is not interested in the topic are often areas to target to improve social language abilities and increase the number of communication interactions for persons with autism. Now let's dive into some specific strategies to assist for families and professionals in facilitating social interactions singing or incorporating music into play can help the person with autism to participate in social settings where songs or music are involved. Music is enjoyed by folks of all ages. Incorporating singing or music into the social interaction is a frequent activity that we observe in preschool through high school social settings. Think about dances. Playing card games such as Old Maid for possibly the younger aged autistic children or Uno for middle schoolers through adult age persons. They may enjoy this game. 
Card games, board games can target the initiating of the social interaction in which the person with autism would ask a peer, sibling, family member, or professional to play the game. Responding to a request by a communication partner when asked to dance to music as a fun activity would provide practice for the autistic person's responses to others. Turn-taking is naturally embedded into card games and board games, so practice in turn-taking skills occurs too. For the younger persons with autism, reciting nursery rhymes together not only builds language abilities, this activity also encourages a sibling or favorite cousin, for instance, to engage with the autistic child in making eye contact, asking or requesting a favorite nursery rhyme, or even drawing a picture together following the nursery rhyme. Amsbury and the Affirm team recommend these common strategies for professionals to utilize in coaching families. Say to the families, imitate what your child is doing. Follow your child's lead. Play back and forth with sounds and objects. Allow your child to make choices. Use the child's preferred items and interests in play. And expand on what your child is already doing. Blowing bubbles is an example of a low-cost activity that young kids enjoy playing together. The child with autism could request this play activity with a caregiver, sibling, peer, or professional. Rocking in a chair could be another request for a favorite activity that could initiate a conversation. Children like to create shapes and characters with Play-Doh, another activity. Play-Doh can be an opportunity for the autistic child to possibly ask another peer to look at the Play-Doh creation. Strategies for facilitating social interactions could also involve sensory activities, such as playing with a fidget toy, playing with a box of sensory items, and of course, finger painting. Shared and interactive book time is always a good choice of an activity that can be implemented that provides multiple opportunities for social interactions in addition to providing language building opportunities. The child with autism could first gain the attention of the communication partner, the caregiver or professional, by calling the person by name and asking to read a book or simply gesturing by picking up the book and handing it to the caregiver or professional. Then the communication partner can describe pictures or content, ask questions, and model the ending of the book by saying that the book is finished. Next, the child with autism can be asked about requesting another book or possibly another activity. For older children with autism or young adults, then building social interactions practice into settings that teens would typically enjoy, such as group type activities, could provide opportunities to practice social language skills given appropriate support. Community types of activities such as clubs, religious group activities, sporting events, Special Olympics, and activities involving the arts may be age appropriate opportunities. Family members and pictures of family members are a great motivator for practicing social language interactions. These are natural reinforcers. The child could request to talk to the family member or maybe even use FaceTime along with the caregiver's help to reward and reinforce the child's social communication practice. The family member that is requested could possibly play a fun game in person with the child or join in a play activity with the child's favorite toy, which are extremely motivating activities. Here's some tips for professionals and families. Families should consult with their child's physician and teachers regarding concerns about their child's language development and or possible referral for speech language therapy evaluation or services. Professionals could ask the families that they serve if their child is receiving a speech language therapy service Medical professionals 
should ask families about the current status or methods of supports that caregivers are successfully using at home. Both families and professionals should utilize the same or similar communication tools or supports during interactions or in therapy office visits to facilitate further communication practice opportunities for individuals with autism. Professionals should also consider preparing their office or therapy setting before an autistic individual's visit with possible reinforcing or motivating items based upon their prior consultation and discussion with the family. Consider that when families and professionals show interest in the same things that interest the person with autism, then the person with autism will be more open to communicating and seeking or responding to communication attempts. The resources page of this presentation will house a copy of this presentation along with additional resources for autism. For more information about autism and communication, please visit these organizations. If you have any questions, please contact me at heather.alger at louisville.edu or view the Kentucky Autism Training Center's website. Thank you.